Is this camera on me? This is 10 percent luck, 20 percent skill, 15 percent concentrated power of will, 5 percent pleasure, 50 percent pain, 100 percent reason to remember. It's crazy how I try to record this video three times, actually, like three times. And like I kept on like either sneezing or having to go to the restroom. And literally, drive, um, Team Four Star uploaded the video confirming that Drabble's here bridge is over, right? And this has been all rumors, you know, them talking about on Twitter, you know, just them just kind of saying like, you know, they're pretty much thinking they're done. And I finally <laughs> about to record the video and then they upload, you know, confirming it and just talking about why it ended. And... It's crazy, man. I just it's just funny how all that stuff goes together. But um, I just want to give my thoughts on like you know just the show and like my criticisms of it, and actually just meeting these people multiple times. So I met them in San Japan like two times. I met them at KameaCon when I was with Geekdom One Hundred One, Miss DBZ Babe, so many different YouTubers. You can check it out on the channel. And it's crazy how like I've grown, like you know from like you know kind of this not despising, but just kind of being annoyed on their impact on the drama community to like loving their content, especially that last season. And when I start loving them, it's already over. <laughs> and I think the last time I had this, uh, the same feedback was with, um, the, uh, the super best friends play. Cause I remember I used to get annoyed at them when it was doing the whole playthrough with, um, the walking dead season two. And they, it was like, there was like a peak annoyance for me. Then I just kept, I kept watching the videos over and over again. I just love their video they made. And then they ended. Like, you know, they ended, like, about a year and a half ago, and I was like, what am I going to do now? And with Drama was here bridge, I kind of said, okay, I'm just waiting for the boo song, because I just really love what they've been doing, like, and I appreciate their old, like, you know, comedy. Like, even though I didn't like the whole, like, you no know, Piccolo was the real dad thing, you know, all that stuff, but, like, I actually got to meet these people, man. I met Kaiser Neca. I even saw him drunk one time when, was at, when I was hanging out with Geekdom and everything like that. I met um, Lanny at San Japan. I met um, the voice of Goku over there. And it's crazy because I really feel like Drive Mall Super helped me appreciate their comedy more. Because I didn't really like um, Nozawa's Goku for a long time. So I actually had to like not watch the dub and just watch Drama Super being uploaded, like, you know, like just just sub. And I, I naturally started to appreciate um, Nozawa's voice. And then I started to appreciate T4 Star's Goku voice because, you know, the high pitch thing. And the comedy just got so much better. Um, Lanny's, like, comedy got better. Um, Man, Kaiser's, like, direction, everything got better and better, and I appreciate their content more and more. When you get to meet these guys in person, like, bro, they're so humble. <laughs> like, they're so humble. They're such nice guys, man. Lanny, I actually, like, walked him and told him I thought he was funny. Like, you know, I thought he got better over the years, man. He was just so cool about it, bro. Like, he gave, like, a, he was just a cool dude. And, like, it's funny. I even got a funny story behind that. Like, I remember when I went to San Japan, I got a couple Team Four Star shirts. And, you know, I had, like, a fun night with some chick or, or whatever. She wanted me to be her boyfriend or something, but she took one of my shirts because apparently chicks always want to take a brother's shirt for some reason. And I remember I never got that shirt back, yo, because like, I think she got mad because I didn't want to be her boyfriend or whatever, and she just never returned the shirt. I was mad because, like, and I think it was the uh, Princess Trunks shirt. And, yeah, she took that. I never got it back, which is hilarious. I still got, like, you know, two other shirts with the whole Team Four Star thing. Actually, no, it was the Princess Trunks one. It was the, um, it was, like, the Yoshi and Gohan one. So, yeah, she took that and never gave it back, man. That is hilarious, yo. And, um, but, yeah, just funny how, like, I have videos talking about, like, you know, how I didn't appreciate them, like, you know, making fun of Goku or I didn't appreciate the Piccolo stuff. And, you know, I don't, I don't really fully regret those videos because that's how I felt at the time, you know what I mean? I was going through a lot during that time anyway, but... Looking back at it, like, how I feel now, you just got to appreciate how they worked on this stuff for, like, a decade a decade and a year plus, man. And and watching their video and them trying, like, them talking about how they try to work on BoJack and how they try to do different stuff with the Boo Saga, I really understand how they feel. Because I, was, I think I finally reached that point with the Top Strongest videos, man. Um, you know, I love making Top Strongest videos, but after a while, you, you start to hate the thing that made you big. And you start... You know, despising it. <laughs> and, and and this is not like, you know, me saying that Top Strong is over. Like, I'm probably going to continue doing that as long as I have fun with it. But I understand completely why they just need a break or just don't want to do it anymore. Because, one, the copyright system is a bitch. Like, they, they try to get rid of their entire channel multiple times. Like, Toei doesn't play at all. Like, they try to get rid of Geekdom over his manga reviews. Like, like the, the copyright system is not for bridging really at all, and they and they honestly, I think Dragon Ball Z Bridge is the best, the best bridge series like of all time on YouTube. Like, it's some scenes that is damn near better 
to any iteration of like a dubbing scene ever. Like, bro, that Gohan scene was incredible. And just the fact that they changed entire dialogue and sometimes the dialogue fits better than the regular scene. Or they added in full-on animations like we know with Android 16's background or like the different dialogue between 17, uh, 16 trying to describe like why Gohan is like, you know, a coward or something like that. It's just, it's, it's funny how like, it's funny like, like, in terms of the dialogue, but it's also creative and impactful. Like, even the father-son command Mei Wave, when Goku's talking to Gohan, it's a different context, but it still it still gives me goosebumps. It just really shows the creativity and the overall, like, talent these guys have. And and honestly, for the people who's like, you know, like, I want to take my money back and this and that, you can tell in the video how much it hurts them for them to be burnt out on this man because they want to do the boo saga they want to do bojack they want to make you guys happy and i feel like any content creator wants to do that but sometimes it's hard to accept the underlying truth of the matter that some things need to change in order to grow and i feel like that's what a lot of content creators it just sucks like you know what i mean like the super the super best friends is like my favorite let's play channel of all time and it's gonna suck when like dashi has to stop making videos or it's gonna suck when i have to eventually stop making vi videos one day like Everything has an ending. And this is the Dragon Ball Z bridge. And it's funny because, you know, Dragon Ball Z Budokai ended the Cell Saga. Burst Limit ended in the Cell Saga. And most people say, like, Cell Saga is the best arc. And I, I mean, I would have loved seeing Vegito. You know, I mean, Vegito with their, like, their, their dumb, like, their, their dumb, funny dialogue or whatnot. Like, that would have been hilarious. And also, if you haven't noticed with these videos, I've been saying whatnot too much. So you can have, like, a whatnot counter, uh, counter like, so people can notice that. But. Yeah, I'm always going to remember Drama Z Bridge. I know well, well, a lot of stuff. I always kind of have like a, a negative connotation at first or like, you know, I'm kind of annoyed at it. Just not really based off the content itself, but by the fan base or the impact. But yeah, Drama Z Bridge really shaped a lot of things. Like they shaped a lot of dialogue in Xenoverse 2 with Drama Z Fighter. I mean, Drama Fighters with like the, the content where they made fun of Go, the Gohan or how like much like sell roast people. Is certain things that Dragon Ball Z Bridge has affected the actual mainstream canon, or not canon, but like mainstream merchandising of Dragon Ball. And that can't be denied. And I think they really ended on a good note. Like, no matter how much I want Boo Saga or Bojack or any of the stuff, or like Future Reborn, you gotta appreciate what these guys did for a decade long without, again, they got their money through their own way of merchandising or like, you know, becoming a, a brand. But those episodes, they made no money off of that, man. Like, none. And they did that for that long because you guys supported them and they wanted to make you guys happy. And it really sucks seeing, like, uh, uh, it just really sucks seeing how sad they were they weren't able to continue to do this, man. And I hope you guys support their different content, you know what I mean? Like, and even then, I used to follow their Let's Play channel. Like, you know, I used to watch, like, you know, the Xenoverse 2 playthroughs. And again, me getting annoyed at dumb stuff or, like, you know, Attack of the Saiyans. Like, it's okay to be annoyed at certain things, but as long as you overall support these guys' content, and me and these guys gave me a whole different look, man. Like, being over there with Geekdom and all these other people at Command Con, ah, oh, man, I just want to, like, you know, meet them again one day and just tell them, like, like, thank you for all the work and all the content and how much they, you know, inspired me, you know, to keep keep doing my thing. Because, like, when I talk to them about, like, man, how hard it is to be, like, that guy and to be able to look at yourself as, like, a low-key celebrity in the drama community, like, you know, it's just all but nothing but humbleness and just, like, you know, wanting to make you guys happy. And, um, like, no matter what I said in the past, I've I got to say I appreciate all the dramas here, Bridge. I have every episode, episode downloaded just in case of YouTube. Everyone's, like, you know, um, copyright strike there or whatever. I have all their, like, you know, their little the different movies, their OVAs. I have them all downloaded because they did a really great job. And I think that should be respected. So, yeah. Let me know. Let me know. Yeah, let me know in the comments down below. What was your favorite drama Z Bridge episode? Um, like, what was your favorite joke? Hopefully, it's not the Piccolo thing, please. Uh, <laughs> Um, I think they ended on a great note, man. Like season season three was like one of their best works ever. I mean, it, like, and I really like how they brought back the Goku thing because, like, you know, they was going down on Goku for a minute, but they decided, like, you know, make him like a better character overall in the ending. Gohan's like overall maturity or whatnot. You see, I'm already using it. Maturity like really helped out. Vegeta was always hilarious. Trunks was always hilarious. Piccolo was always fun. Man, I'm gonna miss John Bazier Bridge, man. But yeah, that's my uh, my uh, comment on. I'm really glad that like you know I had like issues before, so I could see the actual video talking about it. Um, gave me more perspective. So yeah, subject peace. Love you all.